make up the biggest part of the industry I'll get the goods for you and me Cause I'm the baby boomer cruiser Where should I go? What's good to eat? I tell you if the cabin's good for sleep Cause I'm the baby boomer cruiser Food, activities, excursions, amenities I got them all for you Cause I'm the baby boomer cruiser I got it all for ya The baby boomer cruiser Our Trans-Pacific Odyssey continues as we head to the other side of the world, down under, on board the beautiful Celebrity Eclipse. And by the time we were on board for a few days, we discovered a few things we can pass along. Entertainment is plentiful on board, and most of the musical acts we found top-rate. There's so many spots, like the Sunset Bar just outside of the Ocean View Cafe, that you can unwind by just listening or get out on the dance floor if you feel it. Music and dancing activities took place every afternoon and night, along with games and other activities that appeal to just about all interests. Food, of course, is a huge part of the cruise experience, and Celebrity does it oh so well. In the main dining room, you don't have to worry about overeating. The meals have a fine dining flair as Michelin star chefs help create the menu, so the portions are smaller. Not necessarily a bad thing on a long trip. Almost every meal we had, we found good to excellent in flavor and presentation, and the staff was friendly and often went the extra mile with their service, and even their dessert jokes. I can say much the same for the Ocean View Cafe, celebrity's buffet dining spot for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There were some misses. My wife says the desserts sometimes tasted frozen and not fresh baked. If that was indeed the case, I'd say that the pandemic really has changed the way that the cruise industry operates as it recovers. Now, I'm not much of a dessert guy myself. However, we were able to order omelets at breakfast and other items as requested throughout the day, and choices were plentiful, but probably not as plentiful as in pre-COVID days. Let's hope it returns. A high praise recommendation here. Do yourself a big favor and order a dining package before your trip. Three night, four night, it's worth the extra charge. But I'll warn you, you'll get more than a mouthful of food. We'll start with one of my favorites, Tuscan Grill. This spot takes traditional Italian dining to new levels of excellence. To just look at the plates and the portions, even those partially eaten, is enough said. But you gotta add the seasoning and overall flavor. Wow! I was very satisfied and quite stuffed after this experience. And when ordering a dining package before your cruise, you save potentially hundreds of dollars on what it would be like experiencing this on land, and quite a bit more than when you wait to order on board. Murano is the authentic French restaurant and part of the three-night dining package that we pre-purchased. I had never eaten French before, and because of this experience, I will eat French again. The ambiance speaks of classy, carefully prepared and presented meals, all served with that exquisite touch that you see in those movies and cooking shows. Finally, there was Sushi on Five, an a la carte, no reservation spot for sushi, sashimi, and soups. It features excellent Japanese food at very affordable prices. This, of course, not included in your dining package, but well worth the extra charge, believe me. Passing the international date line wasn't a port stop, but on board the Eclipse, it was an event. We were actually moving to the other side of the world for real. Each passenger received a certificate and even got a chance to pose for a pic kissing a fish. All in good fun, of course, and we can no longer be frowned upon by the sea gods for being pollywogs. Finally, it was Land Ho, Papa Ete Tahiti on day seven, and oh my, it's the stuff of postcards and movies, a sight to behold. (laughs) 
We booked an excursion through Celebrity, which featured a catamaran ride to an area to snorkel and or float. It looks like the water is shallow, but it's so clear that you don't recognize it's about 25 feet deep. A pool noodle was provided to stay afloat. I took a pass on this one, but our friends had a wonderful time. Next day, the scenery was a bit different, but every bit as breathtaking in Morea. Again, we booked through the cruise line and catamaraned out to a snorkel and wading spot that was only four to six feet deep. We were even joined by a young shark and a young stingray, both of whom playfully swam with us as we waited. The next day, we arrived in Raiatea, and again, we booked an excursion through the cruise line and enjoyed our guided tour, lunch, and shopping for the day. Halfway around the world and in heaven. Folks, this is the final spot on our French Polynesian stop along our Trans-Pacific cruise. And uh, this is Raiatea, and we are on a private picnic area or a little beachfront here and this is a beachfront like you get on those postcards that advertise a certain area it is serene it is beautiful the water is shallow about as far as the eye can see you can kind of wade out and walk it doesn't get too much deeper than waist high it is absolutely incredible the beauty here the cleanliness the island food the love that the people put into everything they do it's absolutely fantastic Please, 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 if you get an opportunity to come to French Polynesia, do so. You will not regret it. After three wonderful days jumping the islands of French Polynesia, we were at sea for another five straight, and this is where we had our first rough patch of the experience. We had very rough seas and windy, stormy conditions as we headed towards New Zealand. Being at the very front of the ship, we felt and heard everything. We could barely stand and many of the folks on board grew seasick. Credit to Celebrity, which responded by immediately providing medicine to anyone who requested it free of charge. A classy and classic move that I can't credit them enough for. In between the waves, we were able to enjoy some specialized ship activities like the silent disco held in the Quasar Lounge, a nostalgic place wasted because staff shortages left it unmanned most of our time there. It was usually recorded music themed to Soul or The Beatles nights, and when it ran properly, it was enjoyable for baby boomers like us. Nothing else feels quite like the silent disco, with three separate channels and people singing along to each because they are wearing headphones. Upon arrival in Auckland, New Zealand, we enjoyed a bus tour around the area and got a small taste of life on the other side of the world. We were struck by the green mountains and the sprawling cities that made up the country's largest city of 1.4 million people. Next day, it was Bay of Islands, and that's literally what it is. Islands in every direction, some uninhabited, others private and or protected. We booked a boat excursion outside Celebrity for this trip, but beware when you take this route. Oh, you'll save some money, but Celebrity and other cruise lines are almost hostile when you take this action. We were not allowed off the ship until after all passengers who had booked through the line got off to make their morning excursions. We missed our morning booking because of this policy, but were able to do the tour in the afternoon. I mean, you get zero, nada, no help from the cruise line at all for anything when you book outside of them, let alone where to go to find your excursion. Celebrity acted like we weren't even paying passengers. Bay of Islands, and specifically the Hole in the Rock boat tour, took me to one of those fantasy movies. I fully expected a giant something to rise out of the water and scare us, if not eat us. But we saw our share of seals and even a whale or two in the distance. It was awesome and well worth our struggle. This is something you just don't see every day, folks. It was then on over to our final stop, Sydney, Australia, where we hit more rough seas and faced the feelings of sickness all over again. But we survived thanks to medicine and perseverance. 19 nights, and with the exception of rough seas and being forward where we heard every clang, every anchor drop, and felt every high wave, it was wonderful. There's enough time at sea and enough stops to enjoy every aspect of this Trans-Pacific Odyssey. If you're a baby boomer, I highly recommend that you take one.
is it, this fantastic 19-night Trans-Pacific journey aboard this wonderful ship, the Celebrity Eclipse, with its wonderful staff, is finally over. I am in downtown Sydney, Australia, all the way on the other side of planet Earth, if you can believe that. And one of the famous sites over my right shoulder here is the famous Opera House with that shell design. So many things to see and do in Sydney, but I'm the baby boomer cruiser, so I'm not gonna give you a land tour of Sydney. But I thank you so very much for coming along on this journey with me. You can do me a couple favors. One, like this video if you like the content. Please subscribe to the channel. Every adventure I go on, I'll take you along with me. And until the next time, wherever you decide to go on the oceans, rivers, and seas on this great planet Earth, it's your guy, EC, Eric Clemens, wishing you happy sailing. See you next time.